Hello Mayen and welcome to Tonalité de Femme. This is a real pleasure for me to interview you today. Mayen, you are living in Singapore, Asia. Why did you choose this city and how does it feel to experiment such a different culture life compared to London where we are now? Excellent. Thank you very much for um, having me today. I'm delighted to be giving this interview. I moved to Singapore from London about four and a half years ago. Uh, before I moved to Singapore, I was a regular visitor to uh, both Singapore and Malaysia. I work in the oil and gas uh, shipping sector, and Singapore is um, a crucial hub for shipping um, globally. Um, so I uh, got an opportunity to move to Singapore with my job um, four years ago. Um, I was delighted to take the opportunity. Um, I was thrilled to Um, at the prospect of living in the sun. Um, I was thrilled at the prospect of paying lower taxes and uh, thrilled to be starting a new chapter somewhere else. Uh, so, so those are the factors I considered. It is far away from home, uh, but thanks to air travel, it's, um, it's only a 12-hour flight back to London. <laughs> Singapore is known to be an expensive city because I often get questions like, oh, you must be so rich, you live in Singapore. Um, so it can feel like a bit of a bubble because it's a very big expat community uh, and so coming home regularly um, often helps me put things in, into perspective. Um, I consider food prices for example quite cheap in England uh, but that's because I'm making a comparison to shopping in Singapore. Uh, but everyone else in England says to me actually food prices are going up and things are quite expensive. Uh, Now that really hit home for me when I did some volunteering um, at the weekend at a food bank and I don't remember very many food banks when I was growing up but I've come to realize that there are a lot of them across the country now and on Saturday um, over 600 families uh, came to collect their food boxes for the holidays but this is a food bank that runs all through the year and um, it was sad to see Uh, just how much people have come to depend on these uh, food boxes because they're um, either low-income families or just unable to afford um, you know, uh, uh, food at, at, at the current soaring prices. And of course everyone's uh, uh, fear is, to, is uh, what, what that's going to mean post-Brexit. You know, will that mean uh, prices will go further up and, and become more expensive? We don't know, but uh, we'll wait and see. Mayan, you have a, a blog. Was it important for you to share in writing your biggest challenges and experiences? Yes, I started writing a blog um, uh, just over a year ago, and it was driven by a need to express um, my thoughts um, on certain experiences I, I've had and, and thoughts um, on different issues. And I started writing not so much for publicity, but just it was a, a cathartic um, uh, means of, of sharing and expressing and processing um, lots of different issues uh, that I either experienced or was thinking about. So um, I've come to enjoy writing. I think it gives you clarity of of thought, uh, clarity of uh, thought process and helps to put down those things and really think about um, what you're saying and what you'd like to, to do, if anything, as a result of those. So I've enjoyed writing over the past year. I haven't done it often enough, but it's something I plan to continue doing. Could you introduce us to the Mayan collection, a woman collection with many interesting fabrics and colors? What is your inspiration? I am excited about the Mayan collection uh, because it was a little hobby that turned into a venture um, earlier this year. Uh, the inspiration for the Mayan collection, um, there are actually a number of reasons. Firstly, I just moved to Asia with a largely European summer wardrobe, which is not suitable for the climate in Asia. So um, the second challenge I had was finding clothes that fit. Um, casual clothes weren't so much of a problem, but work clothes and dresses and shirts and skirts that actually fit 
were a little bit of a challenge. And secondly, um, thirdly rather, I thought that there was um, not very much on offer in terms of style and fabric and choice as I'd like. So I worked in fashion as a student. I worked for Isan uh, in my student years. And after that I worked for uh, German fashion house Escada. And I developed a real love for fashion uh, from those days. And I started uh, sourcing fabrics for, for myself and having things made um, throughout my travels all over the world. I always pick up fabric from different countries that I visit. And then I started getting questions like, that's a very nice dress, where did you get it? And then it occurred to me that I could actually make these dresses and um, have a collection of uh, dresses and clothes in natural fabrics, so mostly cottons and linens are what I work with um, at the moment, and a few silks and um, there's a lot of um, synthetic uh, clothing on the market, a lot of polyester um, and other synthetic fibres which I don't fi find ideal for um, tropical climates. Uh, it's important to have breathable uh, fabrics. The fabrics come from a number of sources. I get my uh, linen fabric from a supplier in Singapore who sources from India, um, and India is known to be a, a big cotton um, supplier. I get my prints from a number of places, mostly from Africa and also from Holland because the Dutch, of course, um, are big manufacturers of um, what we call African print but which really originally came from Indonesia, the uh, batik fabrics. So um, the Dutch have still maintained that manufacturing of the batiks and I, I get some from, uh, I, I bought fabric from both Nigeria and Ghana where they also have local um, suppliers and manufacturers of print fabric. Living in a tropical environment, I think it's nice to explore colour and to wear colour more, which um, I didn't do very much of in England. So I'm enjoying um, uh, experimenting with different colours and prints. I hope for the Maya collection, of course, to continue to grow and expand beyond Singapore. Um, in the new year, the website's going to go live so people will be able to purchase directly from the website. Uh, I hope that in the next two to three years, I'll be able to expand into um, soft furnishings and accessories um, using uh, the prints and the colours that I currently work with. Mayen, I would like to know your ideas about the movement Me Too towards uh, women and denunciation of sexual violence. How could we help the next generation, our daughters? You are saying that education is the key by giving them all the mentorship, love, encouragement and support? Yes, the, um, the, the involvement of um, the Me Too uh, movement has been quite interesting because we all know that um, sexual harassment uh, and assault um, of any nature has been going on for a long time. Um, so it, it was probably about time that it all came to a head and things took um, a change. Um, kudos to the courageous women who um, voiced uh, their, their experiences and gave courage to other women who then uh, followed on and came out with their, um, with their stories. It's just horrendous to think that there was a whole group of women um, all over the world who was, who was enduring this in silence um, and I think that um, this, this change and this turn um, and, and this voice that women now have and we're hearing um, was something that needed to happen and it's a good thing it's happened. Now the, the movement also ties into the issue of equality, um, you know, between uh, gender equality in the workplace um, in, in different spheres of society and one might argue that if we had more equality then women wouldn't feel uh, they were at the mercy of um, powerful men and powerful bosses who um, uh, you know, could take advantage and, and, and influence them to, to, to do things against their will. So I hope that um, with, with the voice that this, we, we've now uh, built it's strong, it's loud, it's clear, and hopefully it will make, uh, I think, especially the men, the predators, think twice um, about their actions, about their consequences, and 
as we've seen, it doesn't matter how long ago these things happen, they eventually come to light. So um, it'll hopefully uh, you know, make people realize that uh, just because you do things in private, which nobody sees, um, doesn't mean these things won't ever come to light and they will be repercussions. And as, as, uh, for women, I think um, you know, empowerment, um, self-confidence, support um, from, uh, you know, from, from as young as school age, um, mentors, um, sponsors in the workplace, I think are important in um, helping women stand strong and, and of course fight for what they want without having to, to, to subject themselves to um, sexual assault and harassment. I hope that in 2018 I can add my voice and my, my uh, resources and, and some time to um, committing to ending these issues for women and other minorities who, who suffer these injustices. Thank you, Mayen. Thank you for your participation on our platform dedicated to women. See you Thank soon you. on Tonality de Femmes. Thank you very much for having me.